Okay. Um, this talk focuses on what heritage interpretation in the context of 1972 World Heritage Convention. And in details, um, I would like to address three issues here. Um, heritage interpretation in the operation of World Heritage Convention. And uh, which kind of goals that we aim to achieve. Um, the 1972 World Heritage Convention was designed to protect outstanding examples of the world nature and cultural heritage. The idea behind it is that there are so many nature and cultural heritage around the world are very important that conservation and protection for present and future generation is not only a matter of concern for individual nation, but also for international community. We need to address that such needs of preservation was driven by the fear of loss due to the mass destruction during the First and Second World Wars, other form of human and nature disaster around the world, and more general, the rapid change in innovation as part of modernity. Today, the 1972 World Heritage Convention perhaps is the most comprehensive UNESCO treaties on the protection of culture and nature heritage. The convention established a system of identification, presentation, and registration in an international list um, of culture and nature heritage of outstanding universal value. During its almost 40 years life, the convention has undergone extensive evolution. Operational guideline has been extensively revised. Terms such as cultural landscape, intangible heritage, and the cultural rules have been integrated to expand the meaning and scope of heritage. All of these changes reflect the global movement and the call for democracy, diversity, inclusiveness, and equality. This talk focuses on one of the evolution and challenges, the theme of the seminar series, what heritage interpretation, or more broadly, heritage interpretation. As Neil Simmerman indicated in the first lecture, the term interpretation did not appear in the first text of the 1972 convention. Only the term presentation has appeared in Article 4 and 5, aligned with other actors, such as identification, protection, conservation, and transmission. In the recent years, the term interpretation has gradually become noticed as one of the key issues in international heritage guidelines and policies. In 2008, ECOMO's Charter for the Interpretation and Presentation of Cultural Heritage Sites was published to establish professional guidelines of interpretation and presentation. Here, we can see that it defined interpretation as the full range of potential activities intended to heighten public awareness and enhance understanding of the complexities of cultural heritage sites. Shown for this definition, the understanding and functionality of interpretation has been expanded, showing it's different from the early notion of presentation. The recent development shows that international organizations such as UNESCO and ECOMOS have recognized the significance of heritage interpretation. Several events and meetings have been held, such as the International Conference on World Heritage in in Interpretation in Seoul in 2016. As the outcome of the conference, what Heritage Center published a report on interpretation of site of memory through a grant made by Korea to the World Heritage Fund. It described the importance of interpretations that it should be integrated as an essential part of the management of all World Heritage sites. I echo with the recommendation from the report that heritage interpretation should be considered as an essential part of the management plan. As we've seen from examples in the past lectures, heritage interpretation is important not only because it offers a way of communication, but also by nature, I argue heritage interpretation is political. Heritage interpretation should be treated as a political form of recognition. As Charles Taylor and later Lancy Fraser indicated, Cultural recognition is the critical lens in discussing social justice. We are in a world that is full of issues and conflicts that are driven by social equality, racism, displacement, and discrimination. 
The current global pandemic has reinforced these issues. Some are historical wounds due to colonialism and wars in the past, while others are ongoing issues such as cultural imperialism, capitalism, and climate change. Similar like the recent discussion about Black Lives Matter, we need to engage with politics of recognition in heritage interpretation as it's fundamental in social justice through adjusting issues such as racism, colonialism, slavery, and violence. When we consider what heritage interpretation in management plan, questions can be integrated and frequently visited, such as, does heritage interpretation advantage or disadvantage certain groups of communities connect to heritage sites or practice? Does heritage interpretation create or reinforce hierarchies or social stratification and equity? Does heritage interpretation only represent man's history, H as a capital H, or does it include or exclude the voices from all members of communities such as elders, women, youths, and the poor? Does heritage interpretation only represent the interests of the state parties where what heritage site is listed or located? Or can it reflect the needs and the voices from others? Does it only represent the story of the victory? Or can it engage with historical mistakes, problems, wounds, or other difficult and sometimes shameful past, such as wars, massacre, slavery, and exiles? All of these questions have indicated here that what heritage interpretation is crucial. It should not be merely an aesthetic declaration of, of what heritage listing or branding mechanism to attract tourism consumption. I repeat here, it does political work. Improper interpretation will not only reinforce historical wounds, but also create new scars and it's happening. It's need to be treated seriously as a form of recognition and social justice, as it has serious consequence on how we understand our past, present, future, and our relationship with others. Okay, we know that heritage interpretation is important, but the question is how we integrate heritage interpretation in the operation of the World Heritage Convention. Here I argue that heritage interpretation should not be driven only by professionals and experts. Instead, heritage interpretation can be treated as a form of co-production. By co-production, I mean all stakeholders of heritage sites, especially the communities, should be integrated as part of the interpretation process to provide the equitable and ethical identification of certain rights and freedom. The key issue of co-production is that heritage interpretation is dialogical. It can integrate both official and unofficial narrative in the production of heritage meaning and values. The first actor of co-production, both states and professionals are important as they provide assessment, funding, and resources to support the production of heritage interpretation. Experts are necessary to undertake assessment and interpretation of heritage with specific criteria and standards. However, they are coordinators rather than leaders. So they facilitate the dialogical work among the others. The second actor of co-production is local tour guides. Among different techniques of heritage interpretation, such as brochures, film, and music, interactive and engagement was the most successful form of engaging visitors on an emotional level and informative level at heritage sites. Tour guides, especially from local communities, do not merely communicate factual information. They perform and personify local culture and value from their own. They become facilitators in mediating the connection between physical sites, the built environment, and the culture and social me meaning behind them. The third actor of co-production is local communities members. Heritage interpretation should also include local communities surrounding sites as part of co-production, as Silverman argued. Members of local communities, regardless of their gender or age, 
can be invited to participate in interpretational material to tell their own story to visitors. This form of co-production provides this group with opportunities to link their cultural tradition and life experience so as to strengthen their cultural identity and sense of belonging. This is particularly relevant to Aboriginal areas where indigenous culture and their communities are situated at center of heritage interpretation. In this way, the interpretation of local history, knowledge and the environment can follow the indigenous ontological vision of the world that goes beyond Western philosophies, such as the division between nature and culture and tangible and intangible. The fourth actors of co-production is visitors. Visitors can also engage in producing the interpretation of unique experience. As many scholars have argued, visitors are not passive information receivers. They can actively participate in recording their story and understanding of heritage values through engaging with visitor books and online social medias. As shown here, the visitors notes in the recent exhibition at Australian National Museum about the stories of the Captain Cook and the First National Australians, First Nation Australian, sorry. These stories written in the visitor booklets are integrated as part of authentic and a valuable interpretation of heritage sites. All participants, local states, professionals, tour guiders, communities and visitors will be seen as potential co-producers in heritage interpretation. Here, all participants of heritage interpretation are viewed as collaborators and dialogical partners. Viewing heritage interpretation as co-production shifts the focus of interpretation from information and knowledge giving to the mediation of dialogues between different value and meanings. Now, one more question still remains. What are the goals of heritage interpretation should be achieved? I argue that heritage interpretation should not only reflect and represent what we have done in the past, but also serve as a tool of social action to reorient our relation with the future and our relationship with others. To elaborate this, I de developed here as a ladder of heritage interpretation a model that illustrates different degrees that heritage interpretation can achieve. We read from below to above. Entertainment and consumption, knowledge and fact sharing, understanding of recognition, imagine reflection, reconciliation and healing. In the first level of the ladder, the practice organized by sites does not serve the goal of recognition and acknowledgement but sometimes heritage interpretation leads visitors for pleasure making and consumption. Last year, it that struck me during my visit at a third turn of DMZ, when some school children treat the place as a form of amusing park, something like they were at Disneyland. Similar things also happen in some reenactment of World Heritage sites, such as this in Rome. I do not intend to show that reenactment is ethically wrong, on the opposite, it can be a very powerful instrument of heritage interpretation. However, we need to be careful with historical enactment. Using historian Greg Daniels' word, it sometimes only presents the past as merely the present in funny dress. I believe this is not only an issue of authenticity, but also an ethical issue about respect and recognition. The second stage of the letter is about information and fact sharing. This is often associated with the idea of presentation of official heritage description developed by experts. We often see like this, a chronicle structure of narrative that is displayed in the main board of heritage sites. It contains important information such as years and numbers, but is objective without emotion, factual without feelings. I often wonder how much information people can re actually remember after they visit. The third stage of heritage interpretation offers a deeper level of recognition and acknowledgement. It shows respect to affected communities. It gives answer to why certain historical events took place and acknowledge the reasons of such events. 
Such efforts allows people to understand and recognize the voices from different social groups. As seen here from the Kofu Women Museum in Nanjing, the status itself become a form of heritage interpretation that recognizes the traumatic nature of the event and its impact on affected communities. The fourth stage of heritage interpretation move beyond actual facts and knowledge. It enables visitors to transfer the boundaries between heritage and particular memory work that involves the process of imagination, commemoration, and reflection. Like this display in the Jewish Museum in Berlin, more than 10,000 heavy round iron plates cut in the form of faces with crying mouths cover the ground of the void. At this stage, the goals of heritage interpretation offer hot interpretation that includes imagination and reflection. Instead of facts truth giving, it engages with narrative and effects that make people feel rather than understand. Narrative and stories are the key here. As Russo Steig argued, that narrative make material things the touchstone of our deepest desires feelings, imaginations, and emotions. Stories are such a powerful way of connecting people to place and landscape, offering imagination and possibility to transcend the present towards the past and future. But I also emphasize here that narrative making needs to be result of co-production and dialogical interaction, because there is an axis of storytelling involved in the heritage interpretation process. Last but not least, the latter, interpretation potentially transform heritage to a spiritual space for healing and reconciliation. Like Shu Mei Huang mentioned in the last lecture, those social functions of heritage interpretation are particularly relevant to post-conflict and dark heritage sites that are associated with tragic events and human suffering, such as jails, concentration camps, battlefields, war memorials, and cemeteries. Such visits and interpretation have the potential for reconciliation with the divided society or communities and they help us to force the peace and reduce conflicts between different groups. As a form of co-production, scholars, officials, victim and their family member should be invited to such heritage sites to discuss together what they mean for the societies in the past, present and futures. Question doing this round table or workshop can include, how did these events actually happen? Who was at fault? Who were the victims? How have people suffered? How have such issues been recognized and settled? But most importantly, how we can learn from the past to create a better future without making similar mistakes? Incorporating these questions requires courage and empathy but only such a way of co-production allow us to engage with the recognition and interpretation of crucial and hidden knowledge of the past. For instance, here, the Kijali Genocide Memorial provides a transparent acceptance and recognition of the Rwanda genocide and devastating impact on the one ethnic group at another. Meanwhile, reconciliation is also a crucial social, political and cultural agenda in Australia with many Aboriginal art festivals and exhibitions being created ac across Australia to recognize the importance of reconciling Indigenous and non-Indigenous differences and histories. However, reconciliation is a complex and challenging work. It requires all stakeholders to work together to develop heritage interpretation strategies that acknowledge non-community well-being and the needs of the past societies, conflict societies. It should go beyond people's comfort zone and challenging our common sense. In another word, heritage interpretation should facilitate our critical thinking on values beyond individual nation states industries. Otherwise, the social function of heritage interpretation can easily fall into superficial propaganda without meaningful impacts on local societies. For instance, founded by international organizations, the old bridge at Mostar demolishing during the Crot Bosnia work was reconstructed and nominated as World Heritage Site in 2005. The post-war reconstruction of the bridge functioned as a powerful emblem 
of international cooperation and political unification between Bosnia and Herzegovina. However, local recognition of the bridge as a unifying feature between two political powers is limited. Without actually creating effects of reconciliation and peacemaking as proposed. Therefore, the co-production of heritage interpretation for reconciliation and healing is a long journey for all related parties. The construction of narrative concerning the past required an assessment of the past from multiple points of view, so as to provide an open dialogue on relationship building, not only between different nation states, but also between states and societies. Now I would like to summarize here. Heritage interpretation becomes fundamental when we address the question, what heritage and the museum does to the society and the world. We should not forget the original intention of 1972 World Heritage Commission. It's not as a tool of political and diplomatic power game, but as a mechanism of conservation, acknowledgement and recognition. Heritage interpretation should not expert driven, but should be a form of co-production where communities situate at the center. It does not serve for pleasure making and consumption, but for learning. It's not only for understanding, but for feeling and reflection. The practice of heritage interpretation should not stay within comfort zone of political correctness but we should use it to test the boundary of our common knowledge for reflection and critical thinking about those difficult but important issues of the world, such as racism, colonialism, and violence. It does not always make us feel comfortable, but only through such a way, what heritage interpretation can serve as a social action to reorient the relationship with our past. There's no easy solution. But in partnership with social media, NGOs, education scholarship, and public engagement like what we're doing here at seminar series, um, about a dialogue between different communities, societies, states, the co-production of heritage interpretation can hopefully create a dialogical form of narrative that move beyond local and national interests, and instead to achieve a greater sense of outstanding universal value. I also like to use the opportunity to share some of my thoughts about the future of World Heritage Interpretation. There has been an emergence of the need for better digital technology to connect place and community virtually. These days, we have benefited from the digitalization of heritage or virtual museums during the period of pandemic lockdown. Many cultural activities, festivals, religious rituals and heritage program has been digitalized online. While many people embrace the convenience of digital technology, like we are doing here, to communicate and explore the world without actually traveling, such development propose a new challenge for us to rethink how the past is interpreted and imagined. These new trends, including an even more substantial effect of inclusion and exclusion than ever. People who do not have sufficient resources to utilize this digital shift has been marginalized in the new normal. For instance, the idea of open access allows us to access different sorts of digital information without properly acknowledging and recognizing the ownership, rights, and feeling of affected communities, especially those indigenous elders and women. In another word, digitalization of cultural heritage has emerged as an even more powerful tool to reinforce and legitimize state regulation of class, race, and new liberal ideologies. The emergence of digital heritage fever would potentially increase new challenges for what heritage intervention and what heritage interpretation. I believe it requires us to think further about the nature of heritage interpretation and its impact on societies. We need a more critical view of ethical guidelines to navigate us on the way we interpret the past. Why this talks? Or perhaps the whole seminar series is just a start. A further critical and ethical discussion is needed to review the consequence of what heritage interpretation on societies. We need to look for practical, but also critical approach 
that guide us in developing heritage interpretation as social actions to reorient our relationship with the past, present, and the future. Thank you very much.